Hey, beautiful. This is your intuitive consultant and life coach, Ava Laura, with another edition of Ava Laura Heal My Life podcast. Listen in each week because I'm helping you to heal your life, heal your relationships, learn how to do meaningful work in the world, and make an impact that creates legacy. So go ahead and get your pen and paper, get your favorite drink, and listen in now. This episode of Avalora Heal My Life is sponsored by Canada's number one inspiration coach, Maureen Kaylee Verdonk, affectionately known as Coach Mo. She is the founder of Inspired Living Life Coaching, and Coach Mo is passionately helping women say yes to ourselves and experience more success and joy in our lives. Visit Coach Mo at www.mocaliverdunk.com. That's M O C A L E Y Verdonk. B E R D O N K, mocaliverdunk.com, and claim your free audio CD today. Greetings, beautiful ones. This is Ava Laura, your intuitive consultant and life coach, here with another amazing episode of Ava Laura Heals. Tune in each week to learn how to heal from whole to wholeness in your life, relationships, business, and career. And today I am so so excited. I have another powerhouse speaking speakers, uh, and this is one of my favorite people, y'all. So um, she is just an amazing individual. You are going to get a lot of nuggets. So as always, you're going to want to pull out your pen and paper and take notes. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and do that. Of course, the recording is going to be available, so you'll get to listen in every time. But I know that you're really going to want to just savor um this conversation and record it. Um, so today we're, we're just going to be talking about a very important topic when we're discussing healing, and that's, that's the, the dreaded F word, if you will, uh, forgiveness, <laughs> right? And uh, we'll talk about that and what forgiveness really means and why it's so important to healing and, and why so many people even struggle with forgiveness. So, again, get your pen and paper out. I am going to introduce our amazing guest, uh, Dr. Vicki Johnson. She is a chaplain, a TEDx speaker, author, and visionary. She is the founder of Girl Talk Unplugged, Sacred Sisterhood, which evolved into Soul Wealth and Soul Wealth Foundation. And she is also an Emmy Award winning media professional with over 35 years in the entertainment industry and 20 years in marketplace ministry. And she is solely dedicated to helping women heal after brokenness. Wow. Mm-hmm. Y'all, please join me in welcoming Miss Dr. Vicki Johnson. Hey, Vicki. How hey, are you? Hey, sister. Today? How are you? I am wonderful. I am so glad that you, uh, you know, agreed to come on my show. I was really excited about that. And, you know, just to give everybody a little background. So I knew that I wanted Vicki on the show, but I didn't know what I wanted her to talk about because there's so many things that she can talk about. So I wasn't even sure which way I wanted the interview to go. I just knew that whatever we discussed, it was going to be wonderful. It was going to be healing that you all would benefit from it. And so when I asked Vicki to do the show, I asked her, you know, she had any suggestions, um, you know, what we would talk about, and she said forgiveness. And it was, it was just so funny. I said, heck, yeah, we can talk about forgiveness. <laughs> but it, the timing was just so divine because I literally just had an experience with someone where forgiveness was just played a huge role. And so it was just, I, I just love how God works. <laughs> so... I know that this is going to be a healing discussion for you all, but it's also going to be healing for us as well. So, Vicki, like, why did you want to talk about forgiveness out of all the things? Why, why was that your suggestion? 
I wouldn't say that I wanted to talk about it when you asked me the question. I just sat with that for a moment and just asked, you know, what should Ava Laura and I talk about? And what would be most powerful? What would be most beneficial to those who get to hear our conversation? And just so clearly, forgiveness came forward. Uh, What I have personally learned on my journey of spiritual growth and maturity is that forgiveness is crucial to personal evolution, expansion, and elevation, and is something that is not popular, Mm -hmm. but very necessary for us to grow and evolve and be able to live you know, an ascendant and ultimately transcendent existence and life. So, you know, we're both healers. We both are passionate about walking in wholeness and wellness. So it was perfect. And clearly, as as you've just shared, serendipitous and uh, going to be timely for those who get to hear. Absolutely. And, and I hope that our listeners really heard what you said, not just how important forgiveness is, but just even your process at arriving to that topic. Can you talk about that a little bit, just the, the sitting still part of it? Sure. Uh, stillness is powerful. Stillness often requires solitude, which many people don't like. Stillness and solitude is very difficult, particularly in in our current culture of social media and everything now. Um, It is a lost art and discipline, I'll say. And so for me, as a healer, as an empath, it is mandatory that I utilize stillness and solitude as part of my, what I like to call, radical Mm self-care. Because we, you and I both, when I reference we, we we are constantly pouring out into Mm -hmm. others and guiding and leading others into their own healing and wholeness and wellness that it is so crucial for us to refuel and refill. And so when you ask the question, because when I'm available and able and willing to have conversations like this, it's purposeful, it's very intentional, and I know that it is for someone or for some people. And uh, I want to be in line with, you know, what is supposed to happen when someone is listening to us talk. So... The stillness and the solitude and the sitting, I call it sitting in the lotus when I'm working with my clients and mentees because, you know, the lotus grows beautifully, but it grows beautifully up out of mud. And uh, so it's a practice that I have um, been doing for some years. And so when I need to check in and get some clarity and understanding, I know to be still. I know to just sit in solitude, and sometimes the answer comes quickly like it did when you asked what should we talk about, and then sometimes it takes a little time, and I've just learned to be okay with the pace of God in my life because what I know for sure is that I am always where I'm supposed to be, when I am supposed to be there doing what I'm supposed to do because of stillness, because of solitude, because of the practice, and just the rush And the hurriedness of most people's lives is what has us living in chaos, in anxiety, in an uproar, always on to the next, and consequently missing the beauty of the moment and missing the the awesomeness of what I heard Deepak Chopra call present moment awareness, Mm -hmm. um, which just creates a beautiful life. So I know that was a long answer, but... That's how I arrived there after some time of practicing stillness. It's not just something you can do. Uh, For me, I'm a very critical and deep thinker. 
So my mind is always rushing and running and, you know, what am I going to do next? And so the, the practice of practice of stillness and solitude was, was good for me to slow down and be present fully in the moment. No, I, I love that answer um, because really what you're talking about is just being in alignment with what is. Mm-hmm. Just being in the flow, just being in harmony. And and that is so important. And as we talk about forgiveness, you know, that's really what I think about forgiveness as well is that it's just it's being in harmony with what is. Maybe not liking it, you know, maybe not agreeing with whatever happened, um, but being able to accept it and to flow with it. Mm-hmm. And so it's so very related. So I love that, you know, that right there is such a powerful, um, powerful statement in that whenever you are feeling out of harmony, whenever you're feeling out of balance, anxious, overwhelmed, depressed, just taking that beat, taking that moment to be still, to be in solitude, to meditate, just to get grounded, to get focused, and allow things to just, just reset. Mm-hmm. You know, reset, push the reset button. You know, I think about um, anytime something goes wrong on my computer or even my phone, like you, you shut it down. You right. shut it down and you reboot it and you restart it. And and that's what that, that stillness is. And so I I love that. And um, I think it's it's very much related to forgiveness. So... When we talk about forgiveness, how would you how would you define forgiveness? And I'm not talking about, you know, sort of the textbook definition of forgiveness, but you know, just having lived and, you know, being a healer and helping other people through this process. How would you define it? I would define forgiveness as trusting that the benefit of that experience is greater than the pain that it caused. Wow. Wow. And that just came to me. Wow. Trusting that when I live in surrender to expecting that I am evolving, I am expanding, that everything is a blessing or a lesson. Mm -hmm. And if it's a lesson, it is teaching me what I need to know for what's coming, regardless of what's coming. It is making me who I need to be for what I am evolving or who I am evolving into and what I am evolving to do as a spiritual person walking out this journey called life. So forgiveness is trusting that the benefit of the experience, even if the experience caused me pain, made me cry, made me angry, I am trusting that the benefit of that lesson is going to be greater than the pain that it caused. That's an evolved definition. Woo! A simple definition is releasing the offender. Mm-hmm. Releasing the offender and then blending the offense into the lesson. Right? Mm-hmm. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you can continue to do that to me. Forgiveness doesn't mean it's okay with what you did. Forgiveness means I choose to integrate the offense in a way that is going to work for my good. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness releases me because the the opposite of that is Unforgiveness kills me. Even though in our minds we think unforgiveness is punishing the offender, it's really stifling 
your growth. And I have lived this, so that's why I can talk about it. Unforgiveness is, you know, you drinking poison and hoping the offender dies from it. But you're drinking the poison. And frequently when we are stuck in a place of unforgiveness and not wanting to release the offender or the offense, you know, we're stuck in that place and the offender has gone on with their lives. Right. Right. And and, and, and so it does not time. benefit you or me, you know, nor does it cause really any harm to them. Because in every offense, there is a lesson. That that's powerful. And your in your first definition, you know, it really made me think back to um, this this Gandhi quote. I'm you know I'm, I'm a quoteaholic, but you know where he really talks about um, like you know that forgiveness is for the strong. You know that the weak can't forgive, but it's the strong um, that are able to forgive. Because it is such an evolved thing, um, because by nature, human nature, we feel that when we're not forgiving, that we're holding the other person accountable, when really we're just hurting ourselves and we're not holding, we're not holding anybody accountable. All we're doing is staying stuck in the pain. Mm-hmm. And so that is our natural human reaction, but to, you know, really it does take some evolution um, an awareness to go beyond that and just say, you know what, I don't like what this person did. Um, it hurt. It caused pain. However, I'm going to release myself from further pain. And, like and so, let said, me just insert something lesson. there, Ava Laura, that that came that just came to me. Um, because you know, since you're a quotaholic, I'm sure you've heard, when the student is ready, the teacher mm-hmm. appears. Mm -hmm. And so every offense really is a lesson. And when the offense happened, the offender was your teacher. Mm. So get the lesson. Yes. So that you can evolve into your higher self. Every lesson pushes you closer to your highest version of you. Wow. Woo! Yes, the offender is your teacher. Now, I'm a, I'm I'm going to flip that a little bit because I just had um an experience that really truly was an amazing lesson. And you know, looking at forgiveness um when the offender is you and not the other person. Uh-huh. And this just happened to me in in the sense that um I I did something to someone that hurt them. Not intentionally, doesn't matter, but it hurt them and and so I sort of had to take a step back and look at what happened. Um and how it was able to happen because even though it was unintentional it still happened. Mm -hmm. And so what happened for me was I really had to take a step back and forgive myself. Right. Because, you know, and, and, you know, everybody's different, but, you know, as a healer, it pains me more than anybody can know when I actually harm somebody, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Because it, 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 like, it goes against the core of who I am. Right. And so when somebody is hurt by something I, I do, it, it hurts me more than they're hurt, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. And so, you know, I really had to sit with myself, and I had to forgive myself. And that was harder than forgiving the person. But the other thing that came out of it for me that I really realized, and this is another unsexy topic um, that most people don't talk about, what I realized is that people don't have compassion anymore. Right. Because in that moment, 
you know, when I realized what happened, I apologized for it. I offered to make amends. I, you know, said, will you forgive me? Because I was really pained that I had hurt this person. And it was really interesting, the response back. And, again, I know this was all the lesson because the response back was, well, I'll forgive you, but, you know, basically there was, there was a, an event that we were supposed to be at together, and they didn't want me there because um, they felt like there would still be some ill will or negative energy. And, and I looked at that, and I said, but is that really forgiveness? Huh. You know, like, is that really forgiveness? If, because if there's forgiveness, then there shouldn't be any negative energy going back and forth. And so I had to look at that, and I said, okay, where's the compassion? And then I had to look at it and say, okay, well, that's difficult for a lot of people, so I'm going to offer to be compassionate. I'm going to offer to, you know, offer the compassion that I wish I had received. And it was very, it was very difficult and it was very, um, it was very painful, but it was also so um freeing in the sense that I actually looked at myself and started looking at all the ways that I was not compassionate to other people or to other things, even simple things like sitting in traffic and somebody cuts you off and getting all pissed off and yelling at somebody. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know what that person went through. I don't know why they cut me off. Maybe they're rushing, you know, to get home to their child or, you know, somebody's sick. Like, I don't know what's going on. So I need to be compassionate in this moment instead of, you know, really being concerned about me. And, and, and so it made me look at my own self and my own actions and how I wasn't offering forgiveness and compassion to other people. And for and me, powerful. that was the lesson. Yeah, that's powerful. And I just would only like to add that we, to the listeners, that we are not saying that you become a doormat or yeah. that you weaken any boundaries that you may have in place, right, to uh, keep you safe because, and, and I'm not saying that about your particular example, Ava Laura, but I, I just want to really clarify in terms of responsible um, information that, Yes, it is powerful and important to forgive yourself, your offender. And when you forgive, there should be a freedom from the negative energy and feelings and emotion. At the same time, you are not required to intentionally put yourself back in harm's way. Mm-hmm. You know, like in the in the case of maybe sexual abuse or right. domestic violence or something like that. So I just want to clarify because sometimes people short-circuit the critical thinking process mm-hmm. and absolve self-responsibility, personal responsibility, and say, well, they say it. <laughs> We're not saying right. bypass common sense. I just want to add that because... Um, it's easy for people to absolve personal responsibility. Forgiveness doesn't mean, you know, toss common sense to the wind. What we are saying is that now you're mindful and conscious, but at all times do what's necessary to stay safe. Okay, absolutely. I just wanted to add that addendum to no, you're, you're what you just correct. shared. No, you're absolutely correct. I think that's one of the the um, the problems that, you know, or one of the struggles um, that people have with forgiveness is sort of that balance in how am I able to, you know, release this and let it go, yet still have a boundary. Yeah, boundaries are important, and boundaries are a part of radical self-care, as well as a part of, you know, maintaining your wellness and your wholeness, and, you know, at a basic level, just being safe. That is important. That is important. But I think the core of this conversation is that forgiveness releases you from any toxicity that can turn into something else. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And it made me think about how many people think that they're forgiving and they're actually not forgiving. Whoa. That's a rabbit hole. (laughs) (laughs) Because we hear it all the time. I forget. Well, fine. I'm going to forgive you. But then that energy is still there. Uh So did you really forgive? Probably not, because let's talk about this for a moment. While forgiveness can be an instantaneous choice, there is work after the choice. Okay? There is work after the choice, which requires compassion toward yourself. So I choose because forgiveness is not emotional. Forgiveness is a choice. It is a decision. I choose to forgive you. Now that I have made the choice to forgive you, I have to go back to what we talked about in the beginning. Now let me sit in stillness and in solitude and process the choice I just made. What does that mean? How does it feel? Am I allowing myself to feel the emotion of liberty? Am I allowing myself to experience the release? Am I processing the anger? What is the lesson? See, there's work to do after you make the choice to forgive. And I think that is what, um, the, like in the example you gave, you know, I forgive you, but there's still the negative energy um, between you and the person that was involved in that particular scenario. Well, that just means you made the choice, but you didn't really do the work. And so that's the power of information. Well, that's Vicky so Ava Laura, what is the work? That's the power of being supported. That's the power of framing and mirroring the experiences with someone who is able to reflect back to you, well, where are you in your work? Mm -hmm. Because if you fail the test, you have to take the test again. That's a good indicator. (laughs) Why does this keep happening to me? That's the truth. Well, really, did you get the lesson? Mm -hmm. Because if you didn't get the lesson, you can't matriculate to the next level. So it's not everybody else's fault. You are not a victim. At all times, you are responsible for your own evolution. And I feel that those with a victim mentality who are, and and I'm describing victims as those who are, number one, unwilling to take personal responsibility, number two, who are unable to turn their pain into power and fuel, to allow them to grow, then you have a victim mentality. It's a choice. Everybody has a story. Everybody has been offended. Everybody has had something that has caused them pain, that has caused them to cry, that has made them angry. No one is exempt from that. What you do with it and how you respond to it is the difference between whether you are a victim or whether you are a victor, meaning you're going to take it and allow it to work for you. Yes. Absolutely. You know, I love that caveat because it's so important to understand that forgiveness actually really does require work. And this is one of the struggles, one of the reasons that, you know, so many of us are having problems forgiving is because we're not doing the actual work. We don't understand that forgiveness is a verb. Yeah. So that's so powerful to understand that really in order to forgive, it really takes, it takes work before and it takes work after because the work before is actually making that decision to forgive, right? And sometimes that can be instantaneous. Sometimes it can take months. Sometimes it can take years. 
And then once you make that decision to forgive, then you have to do the work to really process that forgiveness and understand now what that looks like, what that means, and what is the boundary going to be? How is that relationship going to look now? Uh-huh. So that is, that is powerful. Y'all, I told y'all y'all were going to get some nuggets today. <laughs> Oh, it's important to know that at all times we live at choice. We live at choice at all times. I get to choose how I navigate this moment. I get to choose how I process this lesson. So really what that says is no one has power over us except we give that power away. And forgiveness, here we go, gives you your power back. Yes, it does. It gives you your power back. It gives you your freedom. I I mean, I promise you, after this incident, when I really forgave myself and I really reflected and I really sat down in stillness and really looked at it, I felt so free. That's awesome. Because I learned a long time ago, that if you don't take the time, whatever happens to you, to really process it and work through it, just like you said, you will have to repeat it. And I'm so tired of repeating stuff. I say, God, I don't want to do that anymore. Can we just move on? (laughs) I need to to go to the next grade. So I, I don't need to sit here anymore. So let me take the time now. You know, I learned a long time ago is either you do it now or you do it later. Uh Uh-huh. And so just like you said, making that choice, I'm making the choice to do the work now. And now is as good a time as any, right? Because the sooner you make the choice, the faster you can move through the work and get to the next level of who you are. Because the truth is, as we both know, every new level requires a different you. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yes. the higher you go, and we're talking about levels up, not levels down. Because <laughs> <laughs> levels down require a different you too, so let me just clarify. <laughs> but if you're talking about ascending and going up, Every new level acquires, requires a different you. And the higher you go, the lighter you want to be. Mm-hmm. And so forgiveness releases the weight of the I offense from you. I love that. That's so true because, you know, one of the things that, and, and, and I love, you know, I love talking about these things because, again, like you said, this is something that I know from experience, from living, Right, and and I think it's so important for people to hear this, like what it really, what it really looks like, or what it can look like, because maybe you're not there yet, and you're working there. So to understand how it can look, you know. But for me, one of the things that I I realize is that there's so many things that people focus on that I literally don't have the energy to even deal with. Oh my gosh! Because it's heavy. Uh-huh. I don't even want to take it on. And so it's it's so it's mandatory. It's not even optional. It's mandatory for me to release that weight so that I can continue to be who I am and do the work that I've been called to do. So it's like I don't even have an option. I can't. I just I physically can't carry the weight. So let me go ahead and do what I got to do to release it and let it go. Yes. And there's so much, there, there, there really is so much power and freedom in that and being able to let go of the pain. And so understanding that pain is always going to be a part of the process, I think on a daily basis, you know, you mentioned it earlier, being an empath. Um, and, and for a lot of you listening, you're probably like, look, I'm not a healer, but maybe you are empathic. Maybe, you, you know, you're the person in your circle that everybody goes to. Maybe you recognize that you're just a very, you know, feeling, compassionate person. And so 
you know, all of these things that we're talking about is a, is a part of that and understanding that for you and when you're that kind of person, you have to find a way, whether you create it or you get help to do it, but you have to find a way to release the weight because pain is always going to be a part of the process, always. Because if I didn't physically have pain in that moment from the situation um, with my friend, if I didn't have pain, I would, I probably would not have taken the time to really sit with it because okay. it didn't bother, it wouldn't bother me. But because it bothered me so much, I had to stop everything that I was doing and really take the time to process and work through it. That's what pain does. Pain is that sign point that says, look, something is really wrong, and you need to right now in this moment address it. So it's never going to be without pain. But it goes back to what you said, Vicki. It's it's how you process it. It's what you do with it and then how you turn it into power. Absolutely. Wow, this has been, whoo, talk about processing. (laughs) This has been a lot to process. You know, I, again, you know, not a sexy topic by any means. Like, nobody wants to talk about this, but it's so important. And um, just even me sitting here being a part of it, I feel like I have to process it. Like, I need to go back and listen. (laughs) Um, so well, Vicky, it, any, it's any, it's good, you know. I um, just personally, well, Vicky, you know, you don't understand. This happened. This happened. Listen, I said earlier, everybody has a story. Yeah, we all have a story. And if we had a healing circle and just sat and passed the mic and shared our story, mm-hmm. I think everybody else in the circle's mouth would drop open at everybody else's story. Mm-hmm. So it is important to realize that every journey is unique. Every journey has the capacity and the potential to be as powerful as you will ignite it to be with the key of forgiveness, right? And everybody's story to them is devastating. Yes. Yes. We so we've all been devastated. I like to say often pain is a great equalizer. Yes. Right? It bypasses every category that has ever been created. Pain is pain. And so when you slow down, breathe deeply, sit in stillness and, and allow solitude to become your friend. I'm not saying isolate. That's different. But when you allow solitude to become your friend daily, And when, you know, when I perform weddings, I officiate weddings. And so when I officiate weddings, I say in the ceremony and in premarital counseling sessions, but I say in the ceremony in front of the witnesses who are there, practice forgiveness daily. Don't go to bed angry. Mm -hmm. And as you practice daily forgiveness, Your love muscle grows. Your compassion muscle grows. Your abundance muscle grows. Your authenticity muscle grows. Your vision and legacy muscle grows. That's what soul wealth is. Soul wealth is living in perpetual forgiveness to manifest vision, legacy, abundance, compassion, and authenticity. And when you do that, you live a healed life life Mm. and every healer every healer who is effective who is consistently impacting others and helping others to elevate lives in a state of perpetual forgiveness our work is never done right we're constantly in process Constantly in motion, constantly in ascension, constantly transcending. So the more you forgive, the higher you go, the more accelerated your ascension. Beautiful. And that that is that is the truth dot com. 
Woo, <laughs> 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 that is the truth. Yes. And and it's and, and you know, and I wanna add to that because um you know, just really quickly I know, you know, a lot of people, you might be listening to this and say, you know, well, it's easy for y'all. You know, y'all are healers. You know, what about me? And I, you know, and and what I want to say is that it really is a process. You know, I didn't start off this way, and I'm sure Vicki didn't start out this way either. This is something that we had to learn through experience and made a conscious choice, a conscious decision to live in this way. Mm-hmm. So be forgiving with yourself. Know that it does take time. It's okay. But it really starts with your decision to want to make that change. Right. So, Ms. Vicki, thank you so much. How can our viewers, our listeners, get more information about you, connect with you. I know they're going to want to connect with you after hearing all of this. I told you, y'all, she's phenomenal. She's one of my favorite people. So you're definitely going to want to reach out. So how can they find you? Well, uh, my website is VickiJohnson.com, V-I-K-K-I, VickiJohnson.com. You can go there, join my mailing list. I do a monthly e-blast to my Soul Wealth Circle. I am also on social media. You can reach me, connect with me on social media via my website or quickly go to Twitter and Instagram at all things Vicky. I am on Facebook at Elder Vicki Johnson. You can like that page. You can like Soul Wealth Now, or you can like my Sacred Sisterhood page, Girl Talk Unplugged, um, on Facebook. And and I love connecting with um, the various communities that I'm a part of. So, again, you can reach me on all of those platforms via my website, VickiJohnson.com, join my mailing list, or just go directly to Twitter or Instagram, all things Vicky. And then on Facebook, I am at Elder Vicky Johnson, uh, Soul Wealth Now, and Girl Talk Unplugged. Would love to have you, those of you listening, um, as part of those communities. Awesome. Yes, you definitely are. I'm a part of many of those communities. So you definitely want to get involved, connect with her, connect with me, and, you know, keep listening to Ava Laura Hills Radio. Uh, We're here every Sunday. And um, I just want to leave you with this quote from Marion Williamson. Forgiveness is not always easy. At times it feels more painful than the wound we suffered to forgive the one that inflicted it. And yet there is no peace without forgiveness. Wow. That's the truth. Yes. (laughs) There is no peace. There's no peace without forgiveness. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you for the opportunity, Ava Laura. I love you. I love you, too. You're my sister and my friend, and I love standing shoulder to shoulder with you doing this work of wellness and healing. Love it, I love it, I love it. You all, thank you so much for listening. Come back next week. Join us next Sunday for another amazing show to help you move from whole to wholeness in your life, your relationships, and your career. Until then, wishing you peace, love, and and bountiful blessings. This episode of Ava Laura Heal My Life is sponsored by Crown by Ava Laura Head Wraps. Queens wear crowns. Order your exclusive, authentic, beautiful head wrap today and learn how to wrap your hair like a queen at crownbyavalaura.com. That's C R O W N. B-Y-A-V-A-L-A-U-R-A, crown by AvaLaura.com. Get yours today. Hey, beautiful. Thank you for listening to another edition of Ava Laura Heal My Life podcast. Join me each and every week to move from whole to wholeness in your life, your relationships, your business, and your career. And if now is the time for you to embrace all that you are for your most incredible life, go ahead and email me today at avalaura at avalaura.com for your own personal consultation. And while you're at it, 
I'm Googleicious, so you can find more information about me online. Go to my website at avalora.com and join my mailing list. <laughs>